Growing up, I wanted to be a wizard. I mean, it didn't actually have to be a wizard. Anything magical would have done. I wanted the might of Thor's hammer. I wanted the power the One Ring offered with its whispered promises. I may have missed the point of the Lord of the Rings series, but hey, I was ten. My eleventh birthday came and went with no signs of a letter from Hogwarts. I was crushed. I tried finding real magic in the world, but all that search led to were frauds and charlatans. It took time, but I eventually came to terms with the fact that that kind of magic just didn't exist. At the same time, I began exploring the world of science. Books like The Elegant Universe by Brian Greene and Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time eventually took their places on my bookshelf, next to the great works of fantasy and science fiction. It took a while, but as I learned more about what science could and couldn't accomplish, I began to realize that it outstripped the feats of magic in nearly every conceivable way. It's only the fact that these advances have become mundane that we don't compare them to those fables anymore. Some of my favorite stories involve the ancient gods. Take North mythology. Odin gave one of his eyes to Mimir's well. The prize for such a sacrifice? The wisdom of the ages. Maybe he was onto something. We may not tear our eyes out and put them in wells, but we do place eyes in the oceans to learn how life unfolds at depths where even the midday sun can't penetrate. We place them on mountaintops and watch the heavens. We even place them in the heavens to look at the heart of our galaxy and into the depths of time. Our prize for this sacrifice? Every day we learn more about this universe. The study of hydrothermal vents may tell us how life first formed on this planet. Looking up at the heavens lets us watch days pass on worlds that still bear the names of the ancient gods. We can see over 13.7 billion years into the past and study the first light to travel through a transparent universe. Could Odin have ever dreamed of seeing as much or as far? The old god sacrificed a single eye for knowledge. We have built thousands and made them tell us what they see. I think we got the better end of that deal. What about those who forged the weapons that litter the ancient tales of adventure? I can only imagine Hephaestus turning green with envy if he ever saw our modern tools. Five axis machining tools that can carve the most complicated parts from blocks of metal. Articulated robots that can assemble circuitry and even perform life-saving surgery. Alloys and compounds lighter and stronger than the finest steel. 3D printers that can bring even the most bizarre constructs of our imagination into the real world. Perhaps the acts of the old gods are not to your taste. How about alchemy and the study of potions? No wizard or sorceress worth their salt would avoid mastering this branch of the mystical arts. Their holy grail? Turning lead into gold and eternal life. Lead into gold? Why settle for something so mundane? Today we can turn matter into energy and energy back into matter. We can create substances so rare, so fragile, that their lifespan makes the mayfly feel like Methuselah. If we put a price on these materials, it would dwarf the cost of gold, diamonds, and any other precious stone the ancient alchemists could dream of churning out of their potions. What about eternal life? I'll admit, we may never reach that particular milestone. That doesn't mean you should underestimate what we've accomplished. Even if we don't have a cure for every malady that afflicts us, we now know what causes most of them. Some we can even stop before they take root in our bodies and cities. Wasn't it Excalibur's scabbard that protected King Arthur from harm in battle? If so, isn't vaccination and modern medicine our mystical scabbard in the war with disease? Who knows what the future holds? One day we may even manage to put a stopper in death. Just about any piece of magic has some analogy in science. Want a city in the clouds? People have been living in the sky for over 20 years. Want to master the force? We have four. Want to create strange hybrid chimera like the Esquilax or a griffin? We've put jellyfish genes into monkeys and made them glow in the dark. Don't you see? The invention of science didn't mean the death of magic. The invention of science was its birth. So the next time someone tells you that you can't grow up to be a witch or a wizard, ask them, where the heck have you been for the last century?